Which of these four statements are true and which are false? Oh, awesome. We're going to play a little game. Let's get into it. Sin is sin. Lawlessness is lawlessness. All sins lead to death. Only humans judge sins in degrees. Only God can forgive sins. Okay, uh, sin is sin, lawlessness is lawlessness. Seems to be true. I mean, if you're breaking the law, then you're definitely breaking the law. I don't subscribe to this whole sin thing. It's Christianity's own book of laws. For millennia, Christianity has been trying to gain enough power to control the people like a government. And they even succeeded in certain periods of time. Vatican City, the home of the Catholic Church, is its own country, even now. The smallest country in the world. It's just over a hundred acres, and it's a monarchy with the Pope as its leader. The population, last time it was counted in 2012, was 451. For anybody who's read the book Fahrenheit 451, that's called irony. Anyways, I know the leadership of Jehovah's Witnesses have always dreamed of setting up their own theocracy with the governing body as the head. If they could all just move to an island and enforce their rules as laws, they so would. Can you imagine that? You know, I just want to point something out. I know I'm getting off on a little tangent here, but I feel like it's important. When excommunication gained real prominence in the Middle Ages, cities were made up entirely of Catholics. The hope was that if somebody broke a Catholic rule, everybody in the town would ignore them. They wouldn't be able to buy food from the store. They wouldn't be able to fill up their horse with gas or however the f*** those things operate. They couldn't do anything. The hope was that the person would eventually just wander off into the woods and die. That's the original intent of excommunication, what Jehovah's Witnesses now call disfellowshipping. And Jehovah's Witnesses know this, as they pointed out in their January 8th, 1947 Awake. Bear in mind, what I'm about to read was released by the Watchtower Society and is now considered by them to be apostate propaganda. Quote, it's an instrument by which the clergy attained a combination of ecclesiastical power and secular tyranny that finds no parallel in history. They continue to say, It's an unbiblical Roman Catholic teaching by which you're looked upon with the blackest contempt, being cursed and damned with the devil and his angels. That is awesome. I love that they actually printed and distributed this at one point. But think about that. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses want. They want the disfellowshipped person to wander off into the woods and die. That's the ideal outcome for them. They don't want to be a part of the religion? Then rip their family away from them. Rip their best friends away. Their entire support network. Get rid of them. They'll either die or they'll come back. Either outcome works. Okay, that was point one. Point two, all sins lead to death. That's false. I could kiss a dude right now and it wouldn't kill me. I wouldn't really enjoy it, but it wouldn't kill me. I'd make it out the other side. And by the way, I switched up my Patreon rewards recently. If you donate $50 to me, when I meet you in person, I will kiss you. With tongue, on camera. And we'll put it on social media. But if it's a dude, you have to pretend I'm giving you CPR for the picture. Tongue is still okay. Next point. Only humans judge sins in degrees. I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming it'll be revealed to us in a few minutes. And only God can forgive sins. Uh, okay. Only God can accept an apology for something you did wrong? That doesn't seem quite right to me, but okay. So in that order, they are true, false, I don't know, and what the f*** is he talking about? Moving on. Let's take a look at forgivable sins. Sins God will pardon. Two kinds of sin fall in this category. Sins lesser in seriousness, not so great, and serious sins, great sins. Example of sins lesser in seriousness, not so great. Okay, hold on. How do lesser sins and greater sins differ? Do you die extra hard in Armageddon if you forgot to ask for forgiveness for a greater sin? Do you personally get killed by an angel instead of just getting hit with a fireball? If you kill the angel before he kills you, does he drop speed buffs? Is it going to use an area of attack move? Driving 56 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. Getting a traffic warning or unintentional parking ticket. Immodest dressing, for example, wearing a dress or skirt too short or with a slit too high up the thigh, or tight clothing. Immodest hairstyles, for example, dreads, hair tattoo, outrageous hair designs, bald head on a woman, long hair on a man. 
Okay, so it looks like breaking secular laws is a sin. Wearing clothing that make men want to rip them off of you is a sin. Wearing your hair wrong is a sin. I'd like to expand on that bald head on a woman bit there. What if she has cancer? What if she's legit just going bald? Is that her fault? What should she do, buy a wig? Or is she f***ed no matter what she does? Anyways, that's all very interesting, but he missed one. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls. So women can't braid their hair. At the very least, they can't braid it and wear pearls at the same time. Really, it's all about not being unique. You aren't supposed to be an individual. You need to blend in with the crowd, be exactly the same as everybody else. An upstanding citizen so you don't bring reproach on Jehovah's name. Yes, they really say that last thing, constantly. Reading books or watching TV shows rated G, PG, or PG-13 that portrays a brief form of sins lesser in seriousness for entertainment. Not praying regularly, an uncheerful giver, for example, of their time, energy, and money. Okay, did you notice that last one? An uncheerful giver of their time, energy, and money. That's where this fake cult persona comes from. They put on this mask of happiness because going in service or cleaning the Kingdom Hall toilets grudgingly is a sin. So they put on a smile and they go through the motions. It's hard. They control every aspect of your life. This is an odd story to tell, but I'm telling it anyways. I remember my mom telling me that when she was in the military, obviously pre-Jehovah's Witnesses, they ordered everybody to only use two squares of toilet paper. She pointed out that it was just a way to control people. Micromanage every aspect of their lives, and controlling them on the bigger issues becomes a lot easier. So even in private, when they're cleaning off the tables or dusting the windows and nobody else is around, they put that smile on their face because they know Jehovah's watching. Subconscious or unintentional sinful thoughts, for example, dreams. Thoughtless, unintended words, for example, words or actions that hurt others. Sins committed in ignorance. Isn't that interesting? You aren't even safe in your dreams. If you do something bad in a dream, you have to worry about how Jehovah felt about it. Something you have zero control over. It keeps you worrying, keeps you thinking, keeps it in the back of your mind, keeps you subservient and apologetic, even for sins committed in ignorance. It makes you search out more, continue looking for information to make sure you aren't accidentally doing something you aren't supposed to. Example of serious sins. Great sins are listed in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It reads, Now the works of the flesh are plainly seen, and they are sexual immorality, uncleanness, brazen conduct, idolatry, spiritism, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, dissensions, divisions, sects, envy, drunkenness, wild parties and things like these. Other examples of serious sins include drug abuse. Whoa, 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 back up. He skipped right over blasphemy against God and Christ. That was an odd one to skip. These are supposed to be examples, not a comprehensive list. Why put it in there if he wasn't going to read it? Whatever. Anyways, just to touch on a couple of these, notice they put spiritism in there. That's because Jehovah's Witnesses legit believe that people have supernatural powers. They believe in the power of witches to call upon demons and use their powers. That is ridiculous. Even though there's no evidence of anybody ever being able to do that kind of thing, they still believe it's possible because it's in the Bible. I know they believe in that stuff because my mom was seriously afraid of it when I was growing up. She believed my dad had harnessed the power of demons at one point in my life and made a point of instilling the same fear in me as a young, impressionable child. Okay, back to the list. Drug abuse, smoking, lying, stealing, deliberately disobeying the traffic laws, for example, speeding, denying the existence of God, not worshiping God, unjust, unmerciful, unfaithful. Hold on a second. I thought speeding was a minor sin. Oh, is he saying that speeding is only a minor sin if you do it unintentionally? So they put speeding on par with doing meth. That's good to know. Celebrating idolatrous holidays, pagan, patriotic, and humanistic. Suicide, improper speech. Gambling, legalized theft. For example, Christendom's gambling casinos, churches. Masturbation, anal sodomy, oral sodomy, also known as oral sex fellatio. Conscious or intentional sinful thoughts, feelings, for example, daydreaming. 
I've already talked about holidays and how it's just another way to control people. Separate them from the rest of society and give them something in common, so they grow closer to each other. Then, if they leave, completely sever that connection. I'm assuming improper speech would be swearing. Interesting that it's also equally as bad as doing meth. And I'm not sure why he said churches after talking about Christian gambling casinos. What's that mean? Is he saying that people turn churches into casinos? I don't understand. And for the viewers who have asked about the sex life of a Jehovah's Witness, here's your answer. Of course, I left when I was 18, so I never actually performed the mating ritual with a Jehovah's Witness. But I've heard that when you get married, the elders will pull you aside and explain to you what you are and aren't allowed to do with your wife. Basically, you can't do anything except missionary style. Coincidental name? I wonder why they call it that. Participating in war, not abstaining from blood. Murder including abortion, owning a gun to protect self and family, premeditated murder, dishonoring those God placed as heads over us, for example, Jesus, God-fearing men and parents, reading paperback books or watching TV shows rated R, NC-17, and blue movies, not showering or bathing, not keeping our surroundings clean, for example, home, yard, car, and office. Here's that micromanaging thing again. You can only watch certain types of movies. You can't take blood transfusions. You have to shower. You have to keep your house and yard clean. Not doing what the elders or your parents or some other adult tell you to do. That's a sin. No surprise they have a pedophilia problem. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Thanks for watching.